Thanks uh, for uh, inviting me to, uh, to be here and it's uh, a privilege to be part of such an uh, important and inspiring uh, event. It's uh, great to be here. And um, it was mentioned in one of the panels that we should also uh, be more practical and uh, I suggest that in this uh, panel we, uh, we are more in the practical mode and focusing on uh, digitalization in agri agricultural, agri-food and to see where it, and my, basically the, my, uh, my presentation is about where we are and where we are going to. So that's uh, um, looking at uh, digitalization, I think it was mentioned quite, uh, quite some times. It's, uh, it's an important, um, let's say, instrument, an important technology to make our food system more sustainable. And uh, <coughs> in, uh, let's see if make it work yeah <coughs> and talking about uh, sustainable um, uh, food production it's uh, it's about the the, the, the three uh, let's say dimensions economic sustainability and environmental sustain sustainability and social social sustainability is uh, let's say um, see it a rising topic I would say um, we um, when talking about digitalization I think um, we have made in the past 10 years a lot of promises and promises that digital would, uh, would solve a lot of topics. And if we look at the economic sustainability, some promises that, uh, that are here on screen, uh, you know, the efficiency, uh, waste reduction, cost reduction, etc. So what we did um, just a, a couple of weeks ago, a brief survey among 11 Horizon projects working on digital innovation in agriculture. We did a small survey and we asked all the projects, where are we? Do we have evidence on those promises? And uh, I will, so... Uh, let's see. Yep. So we, um, we did some small exercises just to, to have, a, let's say, a first step in this, uh, this, uh, this one. And um, if you look at the economic sustainability, we, um, we got pictures like, like this. It looks very complicated, but what you can see, I, I'm not going to explain too deep about it, but what you can see is some, some of the promises are having great attention. They have good evidence in validated in small groups, I think. And that's basically the highest scores we got out of this uh, exercise. Uh, but you can see production efficiency, cost reduction, and uh, the, the error reduction. These were the main uh, promises that we have some evidence that, that, that digital is, is uh, supporting this benefit. Um, we see, for instance, reduced mortality or yield increase is rather low. Yeah? So it's not all the promises that we make. We need to differentiate. I think that's uh, the, the great message behind it. So if you look at the other... Uh, promises in the environmental sustainability. So we're talking about fertilizers, uh, carbon dioxide and uh, soil and water. Uh, these are all the, I think we all know the, 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 the promises. And here you can see the same picture. Um, we have some evidence on irrigation, but it's it definitely the irrigation is a point of attention that, is, uh, that has a lot of attention. But on the other hand, waste reduction is, well, not that prominent in, in, in the project that we are talking about. We look at um, the next one, the social sustainability, then we talk about, uh, let's say, uh, uh, nice farming, <laughs> uh, traceability, uh, um, welfare for the farmer, transparency, so th those kind of things. And here we see the same picture. So a lot of uh, evidence in, in, valid, in small groups on the the work time and the reduction, so it makes the life of the farmer convenient. We have quite some proof of that. But some others, the healthier products, the farmer welfare, we, we don't see really evidence yet on this. So, is this, is this a negative? Is this, is this, the, the, the picture is that um, not all the, the, the promises are covered in the, in, the, in the project. Is this a negative thing? I don't think so. We have to be aware this is uh, the response was from uh, horizon projects, uh, researchers, so they look for the problems. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, they are they defining the, the the challenges that they need to work on a little bit more so that's uh, because on digital uh, innovation we already have a lot of things going on and a lot of benefits have been realized uh, already in practice so i think i'm quite positive about this but it helps me to to identify where we put more emphasis in making the promises uh, true and we should not forget some dimensions that uh, we promised that are important for society or for farmers or uh, for a sustainable food that we don't forget them so that was basically the, the message behind this um, another uh, thing is looking at uh, digitalization we also see a sort of um, let's say evolution and the evolution is that we started uh, uh, with uh, developing apps, apps for uh, irrigation or having a, uh, in the, when the cow is in heat uh, or there's, a, you know, all kinds of apps that, that helps. But working in, uh, with farmers, uh, one farmer shouted to me that, George, I don't need more apps, I need systems. So that's when, let's say, the next step was made, that we uh, made decision support systems, farm support systems. Oh, the, and you see that the, the, the way we were integrating different, let's say, different apps, different information flows, and different parameters. Um, on the other hand, you could also see that uh, the number of stakeholders already uh, at farm level was bigger. Uh, so the extension service came in, the feed supplier came in as one of the stakeholder in these kinds of systems. Um, the next step that we, uh, I think we are now in is that we see that the digitalization is now serving value chains. So we have a um, value chain from, uh, let's say, the, 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 the input supplier to the, to the retail and in the end to the consumer. We see a lot of um, uh, initiatives and, and uh, already uh, uh, operational stuff in the traceability, for instance, that are serving where the, the digitalization is now serving the, the value chains. And uh, then the next step is also, um, let's say, in discussion now. We are preparing on a next step, and which is, uh, uh, we called it the twilight zone. It's where we start talking about collective data sharing. Data sharing with private sectors, with public sectors, bring all the data together in data spaces and build uh, systems on that that can benefit different stakeholders. But what you see is that in the picture it's demonstrated that uh, the number of stakeholders is well, going up very fast, so we have a lot of stakeholders, and the complexity of the system. So it's an integration, uh, it's, it's a complex challenge to integrate. So that's where we end up in, let's say, the, the upper uh, uh, right-hand side. Um, it's the system of systems approach that we need to work on now. And if you look at this, this paradigm shift, as we call it, there are some changes going on also in our approach of the, on digitalization. What we see is that um, in developing tools, the user-centered approach is not valid anymore. It's, uh, it's, it's at the app level, maybe at the system level, but in these data spaces we're talking about, yeah, uh, and, and, and all kinds of different users. And uh, it's, 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 we need another approach for that. Um, we have to identi identify that we have a lot of different uh, stakeholders with different roles. So we are combining uh, the production sector, but also uh, inspection services. Uh, and, uh, and um, let's say, uh, 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 the, 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 the service providers in the, in, the, in, the, in the value chain. So it's a complex of, of, of stakeholders that have different roles, different, uh, I would say, uh, expectations of this, uh, this, 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 let's say, new paradigm. Um, so we also run into some, some issues because there are already a couple of initiatives going on in this, this area and we run in the complexity of the business modeling. It's not only the business model for the solutions, for the systems, but there are, let's say, a multi-sided uh, business models. Uh, people that bring in data in the data space, but not, nothing do, doing with it, they also need to be compensated in uh, one way or another. Um, 
and it's also, um, let's say, in this, uh, this, this complex arena, uh, we're also experimenting some, uh, some uh, complexity in how to, 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 to fund new, uh, new initiatives. Um, it's, uh, it's not for nothing that we designed it as a cloud in, in terms of, it's a, a, a sort of vague still. Eh? So it's difficult to, to, to be uh, clear and transparent. Um, so in this, what we see is that um, uh, for us it's clear that we also see a lot of um, uh, social uh, dimensions in it. it. It's not making this, this let's say, uh, data space, the technology is there, the technology is there. Uh, but we see that other topics are uh, coming in where we need the social sciences. So it's not the technology driven anymore, but we need to, uh, to be supported by the social sciences, not only for the business model part, but also for, for the governance structure, for, let's say, thinking about incentive structures. It's not only money that is driving us. I think we had some presentations this, uh, this morning that explained on that. We need to have, if you put your data in a, let's say, uh, in a data space, you need to have trust. Uh, so that's, uh, that's also a dimension that we uh, should uh, take care of. And we also should foster some, some let's say, we call them uh, uh, soft assets, like, uh, like um, inclusiveness. Uh, so uh, the gender topic was mentioned, uh, but also uh, uh, the fairness. What is fairness and, and how, how are we going to work with that? So that's um, um, an, another, let's say, um, challenge that we face in digitalization is uh, a quite different nature. It's um, about distribution and scaling up. And uh, given the work that we are doing, we're working for farmers, for farming communities, and they are located and they cannot, uh, farmers from Romania are not coming to Brussels to hear what's going, what's new on the floor. And you have to really bring it to there. And that's why, let's say on a massive scale, we are now implementing, uh, we call it hubs. And hubs is, uh, they are there, digital innovation hubs. And for, uh, for the, uh, we also have specific agricultural digital innovation hubs as we are uh, promoting in Smart Agri Hubs. And they are pushing and developing local communities, local ecosystems that can make the, the transformation of digital in, in the agri-food sector, uh, make it happen. And as, as, as we were explaining previously, it's not only a farmer with a tech provider and a software developer, it's a multi-stakeholder thing. Uh, extension services is involved, uh, the, prof the, the input suppliers, uh, uh, the, the local government is involved. There are a lot of stakeholders that we bring together in those digital innovation hubs, which are really in the field, local. And uh, the idea is that we connect the, the, the digital innovation hubs, we connect them with each other, with each other and with other hubs, non-agri non hubs, I would say, and with the knowledge, the competence centers in, 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 the, in, in, in Europe. And then we get pictures like this, where we currently we are talking about uh, 350 agricultural digital innovation hubs spread all over Europe. Yeah, so, and we are uh, hosted by one of them today. <laughs> so, but we have a lot of them and uh, we took a look and half of them are really active and are generating new initiatives, new projects to, 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 uh, to, to support their uh, local community in, in this digitalization uh, challenge. Um, these hubs are, are connected with, we call it an innovation portal, and what we have done, and we continue to do so, is collecting all the knowledge, all the good practices, all the experience, all the tools, and bring it in an innovation portal and make it available for the hubs, for the digital innovation hubs, so they can use it in their local community. And that's, uh, that's the thing that uh, uh, is now, let's say, in place. And uh, uh, we are now working on uh, continuation without the support of the Commission, I would say. Um, so, summarizing, I think um, if we want to, uh, to make next steps in, in the digitalization in the agri-food, we need to have more focus on the impact and don't forget uh, the promises that we made. Um, so we need to have more insight and more effort on uh, creating evidence. I think we are also in a state that uh, 
we don't need to sell digital innovation uh, too much, we also should have an open eye for the downsides that can make the proposition stronger, in my opinion. So the downsides, because a lot of cases when you see in, in, uh, in, in, in examples where there are winners, if it's a zero-sum game, there are also losers, and you have to, uh, to, to respect that and to have a good, uh, let's say, solution for that. Um, like I mentioned, we are now also in a stage that the technology is there. If it's not there, we pick it from other sectors, I would say. <laughs> but it's more about other dimensions, so we'll make it into a business and uh, do it in a fair way and, uh, and in a sustainable way. And that's made, uh, I think we can uh, have a good contribution from the social sciences in that. So we're moving towards the data economy, so data as such will be more valuable and not only for uh, direct applications, but for an, an, a, a large uh, variation of, of users. And we need to, uh, to continue, and that's also why I'm here, to connect dots, to connect dots so that we can build upon each other's res uh, results instead of doing the same all over Europe in, uh, and reinventing the wheel over and over. So that's uh, my start for the discussion. Thank you.